Thank you so much, everybody, who's managed to have a little listen in today. Um, it's a real pleasure to spend a bit of time with you, just a few minutes, um, and share a bit about what we've been doing. So um, I don't know if you've seen so far that we have been doing a, a YouTube channel. We started last November. Um, and I love people. I love hearing their stories. Um, and whenever I go anywhere, I'm always just chat, chat, chatting. And Peter would sometimes say, oh, goodness, that'd be great if you just get these chats out somewhere. So I'm having, you know, I love people. I love meeting and chatting and building people up and talking about the faith. And I had some big struggles in my faith. So I'm really keen to, you know, love on everybody. Uh, and also Peter, meanwhile, is filming and he's a professional uh, filmmaker and photographer. Uh, and you know he makes lots of gorgeous videos for the family. Anyway, we have we about this time last year started thinking maybe we should do like a Catholic podcast. Anyway, I'm a very visual learner, so um, God is so good to us and so patient with us that finally by November my sister came to me and she said, "Right, Maria, when are you going to start this YouTube channel?" Oh, well, YouTube channel. Okay, okay, we could do something little like that. So uh, she wanted a date. Uh, we could do it in two weeks. What day? Uh, Friday. What time? 7 p.m. And I thought, what am I saying? I don't know if I've got time for this. I don't know anything else. Um, but I just felt I should answer her. She she uh, was maybe moved by the spirit. So we started on Friday, the 27th of November, um, the first weekend of Advent. Uh, so the first weekend of the church's year and we have not stopped since then. We dived in, we're real, um, we're prayers and we listen to um, whatever God wants for us. So uh, we dived in without doing any planning whatsoever on how often we were gonna do these things, absolutely what the content will be. Now I did, in those two weeks, have some plans. Oh, thank you, John, God bless you. We did have some plans, I had a notebook, a new one, who doesn't love, stationary um, and an excuse to get a new notebook and um, I had lo lots of plans and people that I was going to talk to and I thought you know we thought this sort of vague idea and like a sort of lineage of ideas but we didn't know maybe we'd do it once a month how often do people do these things once every two weeks anyway God is so good to us and that is uh, my first thing I would like to say to you um, or before I do I'll just say that um, if you haven't seen our videos we share a, a window into Catholic life so be it for single people, married or, or other, we go out and meet people, hear their stories, I interview and Peter makes films. So um, we like to have really, really high quality, inspired by Sancta Familia um, and EWTN. There's not many um, forums out there, particularly in the UK, that do that sort of thing. And we found even across the entire of YouTube, there wasn't anybody that was doing real life sort of meeting others and making these high quality documentaries um so that is where we started and um, so something might resonate with you um i'm going to talk to you whether you're sharing on any platform whatever it might be uh because sh uh, making a youtube channel is quite niche um but also you know if that is god's calling then maybe that will come along and maybe there'll be other things because there's other things for me that have led me to this point um so just so if it resonates with you, great. And if not, just stick it in your back pocket and perhaps it will inspire you or someone else in the future. So I'm just going to share a few top tips. Um, and the first thing is living on prayer um, and just really checking yourself. I don't want to be patronizing. I don't want to preach to the preach. But um, at the same time, sometimes when things are really tough and you can sort of have this like phrase, checking myself, life can get tough at times. And I think the first thing to go to is looking at our uh, our spiritual life um, and so our sacraments our daily routine of prayer uh, daily examination of conscience and that just ongoing conversation with God I am always talking to God and um, it just reassures me and calms me uh, and at the same time I think it's really important to have those structured prayers in your day whether you start with a decade a day uh, whether you're on whole rosaries 15 decades whatever it might be um, something that that works for you and like with everything, you want it to grow, you want to grow in that area. Um, so just like have in mind how you're gonna 
make that better. So at the moment, I'm working on getting a daily examination of conscience into my routine. Um, another thing that I do is I have affirmations around the house. And I think you can see there's one. I got these little post-it notes in Asda. And on the back of the, on, um, their little revision notes, on the back of the line side, there's just a blank side. Now, it was just something practical that I could write down an affirmation, a Bible quote um, that would just hold me, or, or a saint quote. So, there we go. so this one is, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. So there we go. I didn't plan that, but that's that affirmation. And I'll have them inside cupboards. Um, I have them in the door. I always like, I love Padre Pio. So pray, heaven, don't worry is on the outside of one of, you know, in the kitchen. I need that sort of thing in the kitchen. Um, so that's something else. It's not something, and I'll just put it out there, that Peter would have instigated, my husband. If any of you have seen our videos, you see that we have different uh, ways of doing things. He likes particular words and not other ones. Uh, we have a bit of fun with that. But um, it might be something for you. But this, I'm just going to throw it all out there and say what has worked for me and what does work for me. Um, and certainly things day to day and that are visual do help me. And the truths, you know, logging log in back in. Um, spiritual and personal development is the second um, tip. First one, living on prayer. Second one, spiritual and personal development. So there's obviously tons of, of really well-known books, and it's really good, like, with everything, just to grow ourselves. If we are willing to step out on a platform, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, Rumble, Twitter, um, whatever it might be, the devil will find the cracks, and we just need to, you know, not only check ourselves in that way, but also be growing. Um, and so spiritual reading, I highly recommend, uh, something that's been a master in my life, and that was consecration to Jesus through the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, also, uh, we have recently did the consecration to St. Joseph. Uh, so they're two things that um, are really great and they're out there. Also, you know, reading into the Bible. It's something I found really difficult to get into in the past, but there's the Bible timeline uh, with Father Mike Schmitz, but, uh, the Bible in a year he's doing. Um, and you can start anywhere. He started the first of Jan, but you can start anywhere on day one and get going. That's a really great thing that lots of people are enjoying. Or just listen out, put your ear to the ground and see what people are doing if you haven't got something already. And also personal development. This is something that I would have really cringed at and I did uh, a few years ago before I started a network marketing business and I was encouraged to some personal development. But I thought, I'm Catholic. We've got, we've got loads of really good stuff. Why would I ever venture into reading anything else? Well, when I found um, a, an author, John C. Maxwell, he um, did a book called Failing Forward, and I highly recommend that if you're starting anything and you're not sure how to jump in, this is so inspiring. And not only for me and, and Peter and what we're doing, but also for raising our children uh, as well and how we can encourage them. But John C. Maxwell is generally a great one to go to, and I'm happy to recommend any books um, if you want a book recommendation. That's the second point, spiritual and personal development. Um, the third thing is thinking about what your content is and thinking on what your spirituality is. Um, again, I'm conscious that I'm talking to probably a lot of very inspiring people, uh, but something that's really helped me recently was thinking about what my spirituality is and at what ratio of mercy and justice. And it was really helpful to hear Jack Valero talking about um, how much, uh, you know, in a way he was talking about the clarity and charity and that being really important. Um, and, and that charity, and when we're talking to people and when we're communicating with people, is really important. So we, we are all on, on this scale of how much. And so it's just really good to be intentional about that and know where you're at with that. Um, and so we um, feel like, you know, there is a time and a place for justice, social commentary, political commentary. There is a lot of that out there, and some people are called to that. And if that's your calling, go for it. That's not our particular... Um, calling just I'm, I'm not as clever at <laughs> doing all those things and, and keeping up to date. I'm a mum of five and homeschooler and uh, I'm also a centre coordinator of education at the local Regina Chaley Academy and so there's lots of things going on so I'm just not upset with that but what I can do God knows uh, and he moves me patiently towards it so justice and mercy and thinking where are you on that scale so with your output and what you're producing how much um, and where do you fall on that? And, and when you're communicating with people as well, um, to have that those lines. And I think that can be sometimes where um, where things can go wrong uh, 
in the world if there's too much justice or there's just too much mercy and just to have a good a good balance but somewhere on that uh spectrum the fourth tip is networking and again this is something i learned doing network marketing business uh go to events whether they're in person or online if you are sharing something you are you really feel there is a gap for there is a need for uh there is you know something you have been given a gift um then just make friends all over wherever you can uh this is just invaluable to to doing god's work when on island spread your wings and, and and enjoy it as well make lots of new friends uh the fifth thing is um a daily method of success okay because i find that consistency and persistency is is the route to growth so if you're or you're doing something and you and it's good then it's good that it can bless first of all the first person in front of you your neighbor like mother Teresa says that's always very reassuring who you know who do you have to love next if you're a parent your spouse and your children they are your priorities obviously and so with even our channel I think I want to help my children buy something that I found very difficult when I was growing up and that was having um like the social life of of the church and seeing that lived out um and so i want to share with my children first of all um that there are families and people individuals and families they are living the catholic way authentically like no question even if they find it really difficult whatever it might be but they're doing it um and so with the challenges and the joys and then from that i'm serving the next person i I then we then taken that step further and, and served beyond there and that's how the online um forum has, has we've used that to to do that end um but this daily method of success you could think of things like how many messages you're going to send out a day if you're going to do a post each day um you could add into your daily method of, of success maybe you might want to read affirmations intentionally certainly your prayer life is in your uh, and, and maybe you don't even like the daily method of success title i know my husband cringes at some of these um these things but ultimately what you're going to do every day because you can go a week without doing any messages or let's say you can go a month without doing any messages and, and reach out or um or post on on social media or whatever it is that you're producing you can quite easily get caught up in, in whatever it is you've got going on in life uh, but if you did for example three messages every day for a month that's 90 potentially 90 messages 90 reach outs to new people that you could potentially be loving and serving in your ministry whatever it might be um so whatever it i mean messaging might not be relevant to your platform or your your mission um but if it is then that's that's one of the things or posting um so we produce one video a week and we um we do a certain number of messages each day and we're working on a good number for that because it's just got to be got to be manageable because it's not one thing just sending out a little messages you've then got to respond so it's great if you've got a day we can send 100 but you might not be able to respond to 100 and then you can fall out of habit so it's better just to do like start small be consistent rather than just have these big bursts of sort of binge binging um but again just be mindful and know yourself um there's lots of my sixth tip is is all the social media platforms that you can share uh, your mission and go out to you don't have to cover them all um but there's YouTube, which we obviously use, there's Rumble, which we're venturing into looking at, uh, there's Facebook, Twitter, Parler, um, there is your own website, and there's many more. I'm sure people have got lots of ideas. Um, and again, just being intentional. Is there something that uh, you want to grow? And perhaps you could add another forum in, um, or backing up what you've got. I know um, there was a problem with a massive Catholic media company uh organization who recently were thrown off youtube um and they lost almost half a million followers and so i i'm conscious that we are we are actually a minority and we do need to we need to be cautious of where we are as well so just being mindful of what's going on on those forums almost finished um and so yeah i'm going to finish with mother Teresa saying start with your next door neighbor do you know who your next door neighbor is she says uh, so that's really reassuring. Be willing to leave your ego at the door. We are humbled all the time and be willing to say, thank you, God, for humbling me. <laughs> I say this prayer such a lot. 
Uh, and it's so good and it's so true. We need to be humbled when all these challenges come up. Uh, and being open to opportunities, seeing an opportunity, leaving your opportunities. <laughs> leave it, leave, Peter's got the children. <laughs> it's brilliant. Leaving your ego at the door, uh, being willing to be humbled and, and taking on these opportunities, failing forward. Uh, and then just at, please check out what we do. We're on YouTube. We're called One of Nine. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, yeah, we'd love to connect with you. We want to network with you as well and hear what you're doing. And thank you so much for listening. God bless. I'll be here for 10 minutes to listen to your questions. God bless. Thank you, Dominic. Dominic's saying YouTube is getting really huge and it's getting bigger in the future. Yeah, it's growing. And there's a lot of great stuff out there. And there is a lot of great stuff. Thank you, Dan, for your comment. That's a great idea, whatever that might have been. <laughs> Thanks be to God. It's all on him. Give him the glory. Uh, you are doing great. Thank you, John. Maybe you've seen our channel. Um, so, yeah, if there's any questions or just anything you're doing, I would love to connect with you. Favorite platforms and what am I doing on them? So, Facebook, Instagram are my favorites. I like going on Instagram putting out a post and then it shares on uh, you can share it on other forums so I share I'm only sharing on Facebook and I'm feeling like I'm not maximizing on this opportunity enough I can tick on Twitter and there's something else underneath that I can tick on and um, that can Instagram can just share every time I do something so I should probably maximize on that but this whole diving in business <laughs> meant that we're now sort of working our way backwards but I think I think sometimes that's just God's way. You've just got to kind of go forward blindly at times, or at least some things will be blind. Um, so yeah, how long does it take you to make a video? What program do you use? Um, so that was something that I wasn't sure whether you wanted to know. So thank you for asking. Um, Peter used the camera that's called Black Magic, um, and he used a program called DaVinci Resolve. Um, it takes about, well, it takes a whole day to film because we want to capture the essence of that, uh, whoever it is that we're featuring on the show, whether it's a family or an individual. Um, so we kind of follow them for a day. We often um, will eat together and things and do like go out and walk and things. So that's a day from, we tend to arrive at their house about 10, 11 and leave about four or five. Um, then the editing can take, maybe 15 to 20 hours um it's a long time it's a lot of things to listen through and sift through and peter does all of that so if you've got any specifics on the digital work please add peter jones on facebook i know it's a very common name but he's mutual friends with um lots of us here or maria jones or look for one of nine and contact us through there we have a page um and we can deal with all of those like specifics but i was just aware that we're quite a wide audience so I didn't want to go into too specific um, but yeah it's a good amount of time that it takes um, oh what's that Dominic a Catholic Sikkim Jolie program I must look that up no, don't know what, what does it say I'm intrigued and what are your favourite platforms guys what are you using do you watch YouTube videos uh, okay, so we've got an interesting audience, very interesting. That's another thing I think. God is in control of so many things. We just did not know uh, that priests and seminarians were going to be listening and, and messaging and supporting our work. Um, and we started to realize as we were going through, we were getting messages from grandparents, parents, married, before they're married, students, teenagers even saying, oh, I've shown this to my mom. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've just binge watched it. Who doesn't like a binge watch when you're, when you're a like, sort of older teenager? Um, we've had seminarians and priests watching um, and people appreciating for all different reasons, whether it's nostalgia, uh, comfort in especially this time of isolation, um, inspiration, you know, something that they're in a similar position, they can be inspired to do something. This weekend we had, today we've just released a story that's a really incredible story of suffering. It doesn't matter what your background is, I highly recommend listening to how 
uh, Mary describes her suffering. Um, and another one that spoke about suffering was uh, Charlotte Harmer. At the beginning of our series, we've produced 21 now, 21 episodes, as well as a few little um, short intro videos. And they are about 20 to 30 minutes long. That's just how it's worked. That seems to be what's worked. Um, also, we really like to engage with our audience, and so we do a lot of messaging. Uh, messaging people that comment on the video, that email us, we have an email on our link, and that we speak to through Facebook and Instagram, and listening to what people say. So, especially at the beginning, we're saying, is like, what sort of duration? What do you think? What do you think about music choices, imagery, content? Um, and, you know, speaking to your audience, like Jack Larry was saying as well. It's really important to find out what what is going on. Um, John, what, John, I'd be interested to know. It'd be lovely to talk to you. What um, you want to do, uh, Catholic YouTube channel, and what is your particular um, content? Do you think what would your what are you interested in doing for content? Um, because I think that makes a big difference. For what, I mean, our content is like sharing people's lives, so it's lifestyle. That is why it takes such a long time to film. And that's not just me filming, it's me and Peter filming that whole day. So that's two adults kind of like out of work, out of anything else. Um, and then um, Peter edits. And then I sit on a lot of editing, but that's, you know, I wouldn't account for that time so much. It's almost to say for me that bit's like a hobby. I then do all the messaging, but then that's a lot of messaging that I do. Um, so, like John Mallon was saying, if you haven't heard his talk, listen to it, it's so good. Um, I would say, sometimes you've got to dive in first and be very generous with your time and expenses and God's providence. Um, we have been really humbled and really carried along with God's providence. And in that, we've been able to then um, build up so that we're asking people for sponsorship. So it's almost like, I suppose, like YouTube busking or something. Like we go on there, we produce all this content, and then people who enjoy the channel, they think, yes, I want this to keep going. And so people subscribe monthly. We use a forum called Church Suite. So people um, are monthly donating to support our work and to keep us going. If we didn't have this, we simply would not be doing it because we just could, we can't afford to do that. Peter, like his work almost disappeared in lockdown and in a way we thought we could tie this in and this maybe but I mean we didn't even have these whole thoughts we just had the time and we thought let's shove it into God's work and he can do with it what he wants you know um how do you make spirituality relevant and interesting I think Catholic lifestyle is definitely something that people are looking at so if, if you are finding John that this spirituality is something you are um move by and you live by then how do you live by it and then sharing that there will be people like you who want to hear um they want to hear about what you're doing is it something you're reading and studying um there are you know there's just there is an abundance of interest and never think that you know if there's something you feel really drawn to there isn't it is definitely worth even dabbling in if you're not going out and, and having two adults to film an entire day um, and then the editing because of you're having to sit through and you're maybe going to do a talk it might take you whatever your spiritual reading you're doing at the moment and then it might take you I don't know an hour to film it and then to edit it so maybe you could be thinking of like two hours if you're just going to present something and then edit it down and then send it out I mean you could get it as short as that and then bit by bit, you can start investing in like equipment and things. It's good to have good lighting. It's good to have good camera or imagery. And it's good to have um, like even nice music and things in the background. Or just, I don't know, your thumbnail is really important if you're going on YouTube. They love that. Um, there's milestones on YouTube that can like cheer you along. Uh, I do too many videos about myself. John, I bet I know you then. Let me find it. Are you on, are we friends on Facebook and things? I have had four hours sleep last night, so I, um, excuse me if I'm being a bit crusty on um, the spoke. Oh, is it pre? Wow. Oh, Father, this is exciting. Uh, let's, let's definitely connect. Twitter on Facebook. Um, 
and Dan Ferguson. Do you intend to take any break, for example, a summer break? Thank you, Dan, for asking. Uh, no idea. With the dive in, we didn't plan. But what we can do is some, some weeks, especially when I went, I've just gone back to work on some maternity leave. So this week, when I went back, has just been wonderfully challenging. And that is a phrase I also really enjoy because life is wonderfully challenging. It's not hard or difficult, well, it is, but it actually, it's all about this great challenge. Um, so when I have breaks from that, we have over a two week holiday, a week, two weeks, three week holidays, but then obviously the summer's quite long. So we'll just like pack up our filming days and it's because that's where I have to be there. Um, and then Peter can do the editing another time. So yes, uh, so no, people won't know that we're having a break. Um, Cause I do think it's nice to have consistency and people are like getting into their routine every Saturday they're having or they say, oh, this is my Sunday night thing that I watch or Saturday morning I wake up and watch it in bed or whatever it is. Um, so I think that's really good for um, sort of serving your community um, being consistent with them, uh, but we would take breaks because we'd probably crash in bed otherwise, I imagine. Um, but yeah, so we'd, but we'd, we'd have to pack up the um, filming to be able to do that. Um, so we, so Dominic, could you tell me as well, what is this Saccone Jolie program? I want to know more about that. I'll have a Google it. No, I'm just Peter updates of all the whatever it is. Hey there, can can you hear me, Mariah? Maria? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, they were something my wife and I were watching for a little while ago. They they vlogged or, or no, they vlogged every day or something, and they would put out these. I don't understand how they would have any sort of privacy or family time, but they just amassed this this huge following. So I was just poking around your YouTube channel. It looks like you're doing something sort of similar, which is. Uh, not as frequent, but just amazing. That is amazing. Yes, so we have, we thought we'd be doing a lot of vlogging, but actually we've like been more pushed towards like other people's families and like sharing their story. But we, I thought we'd be doing a lot of vlogging. Peter, stick the camera on, I'll home educate, make us whatever I'm doing, like the food, I'm into like healthy eating and whatever, and we'll be doing things like that and like whatever, like the thesis we're doing. We really like the Catholic year, all year compendium, excellent. So like, you know, whatever we're doing in terms of feast days and things, I thought we'd be doing that in the son's birthday and people get to know the children and things. Or I, I was happy for that sort of thing to happen. But we're almost now just producing documentary style films, short ones of right. like other people's lives. Mm -hmm. So in it, so God's moved us towards this and actually I quite like it because because it does take some of the pressure off, that, off us. But I would be up for doing that in the future. I know some people have got like really, uh, they don't want to share on media and their children and things. But I think the fact that I've still not heard something that bothers me and my family, then I just think, and that's what God allowed, has allowed me to feel. And again, in prayer, and I'm cautious, you know, for the children and things. But I'd be happy to do it one day. If that's people, uh, I've got another message today actually about, doing like a day in the life of and that sort of thing so um, well, I, i'm looking forward to seeing where you go i think that's i that's exciting i'd love to actually connect with you uh, some thank you and, yeah, and love to connect. brainstorm a little more for sure well for those who are, who are watching thank you again for uh, for joining this session